Jacob, you are still with us, right? All right we're going to go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to figure out how to do this stream deck. Jacob, boom, we're going to zoom in. Where are we zooming to today? I never know where everyone's at. They're oh, all over the world. Where are you at, Jacob? Prague. You're in Prague? Oh, my goodness. What a beautiful, Prague, beautiful yes. city. It's like, it's like 11 a.m., so I'm fine. I don't know how you are, but I'm pretty good. <laughs> well, take it away. It's uh, all you. I'll see everyone later. Today, yes, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, the PeachPy compiler and some advanced interoperability features. So uh, features on how you can integrate C Sharp or any kind of .NET, .NET project with uh, a PHP, which is pretty cool and gives you a lot of options on how you can improve or extend existing PHP projects or extend existing C Sharp projects with a little bit of PHP. So let me start with uh, a short introduction about PeachPy. It's like an entire platform. It contains a compiler, which is based on Roslyn. So uh, there is an entire code analysis project that takes a bunch of PHP files and analyzes it and creates all the trees and semantic trees and uh, outputs the DLL file. There is an entire runtime that supports uh, the compiled PHP programs. And there are also a bunch of libraries that simulates or re-implements all the PHP stuff, like all the PHP extensions and so on. So to make it more, a little bit more clear, and I promise this is the only animation we have in this, in this presentation, <clears throat> the compiler takes all of the PHP code. Uh, it can be a really huge project, like I will show you uh, after a few minutes. And it also uh, references any assembly, any, any, any .NET reference you can have, and creates a .NET standard assembly, which is portable, managed, and also it's sourceless. You don't have the original PHP source code in the resulting, in the resulting uh, DL file, which gives you a few more, few more other options on how you can distribute your PHP applications, for example. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the first demonstration to make it more clear. Uh, it's a simple console application. So let me switch to, to Visual Studio Code. And in here I have an empty folder. <clears throat> and we'll create a single PHP. Let's, let's start with a single PHP file. And fill this with uh, something really simple. Like hello, the hello world app, and what every .NET project needs is a project file. Uh, you can create it manually. You can use .NET templates, as I will show you later. Uh, in Visual Studio Code, we have a, a really uh, small extension that adds a comment to the command palette. Yes, it's this one, which will create a project file for you. <clears throat> and there it is. And what we see is a PHP file and, and a project file containing like anything we are used to from C Sharp, uh, the output type property, the target framework is .NET Core App 2.0. Some description, which is uh, not necessary, but there's for instance, we are compiling files. It's it's .php uh, uh, files, all the files, and one addition we reference the uh, NuGet package containing core. So uh, this is a really you actually don't need uh, any PHP any web server, uh, all other stuff is downloaded automatically when you first compile your project. So, debugging, and uh, uh, for just launch it. You can see in the invoker, debugging, uh, of course, do it again. You, you can see the difference. Uh, 
.NET debugger. <clears throat> Which means one uh, great advantage of the entire project, because all the tooling, all the great tooling of the .NET can be used for the PHP apps as well. And we will show several other toolings during the presentation, like Visual Studio Diagnostics and so on. But uh, for now, I would like to demonstrate uh, the interoperability features. So if you write a really small piece of code, like, <coughs> like a general, uh, general hello world, some function, so we'll see, so we'll see how it works. Array as, <coughs> as value and write this, I don't know, the value. And come on, do something. Okay, I lost mouse. Good. Hey. <laughs> okay, I think I've just lost my keyboard. Wait a minute. Can we have a second? Um, what's going on? <laughs> wow. I just lost. I just lost the keyboard. Uh, anyways, let's write a simple hello world application in PHP. Like, hi. Like hi. Yeah. Uh, and run it in a usual way. What's great about the project, as I showed you before, is yes, you can debug the application as any other .NET application, uh, but you can also you can also use all the .NET stuff. You can uh, implicitly you get all the references to all the .NET standard runtime and packages and anything you specify in your in your project file as a package reference or as a project reference. And, and or any other reference to a DLL file. So I can write something uh, without any other configuration, something like maybe system date time. And using the PHP syntax, I can print, uh, I get, I get, get a current time, uh, convert it to string and concatenate using the PHP syntax and run the project, I think F5. <clears throat> yeah, and just continue. And you'll see, uh, you'll see it's seamlessly integrated with all the .NET goodies. So what's the result of this compilation? Uh, as you are used to from any other C-sharp project, there is the bin folder with debug and netcore app and there is a DLL file and PDB file for debugging uh, for debugging features, and we can uh, we can look at the DLL file using some decompiler like ILSpy, for example. So if we if we open the DLL file in ILSpy like this, <clears throat> yeah, you'll see there's a bunch of uh, Bunch of weird uh, methods. It's because they uh, they are meant to not be accessible. But there's also the the, the function we've written, and you can see in the uh, in the ILSpy there's a regular call to the datetime function. So it's 
seamlessly integrated with no overhead at all. So you can write these C sharp PHP hybrids like all together without any overhead. There's also a bunch of other other runtime stuff that are generated by a compiler. But uh, everything works as as one, as any other dotnet language. <clears throat> so let me uh, it's just for a quick info. <clears throat> Let me show you some uh, some more interesting topic, uh, web application. In here, uh, we can create a regular uh, PHP web application, PHP website, without having a web server or having a PHP on your on your machine, because we uh, have ASP.NET Core and it's built in Kester web server. So we can create a C# -sharp project that will target a PHP and and run its own web server. Uh, it can run on command line, on on IS Express or IS on Azure or anything you are used to. So we start with uh, an empty folder again, and for this for this uh, purpose we have prepared we have prepared a set of templates. If we browse to our project website, uh, there's already prepared command for it. So using this command, .NET new uh, dash i PHPy templates, we can install .NET templates to <clears throat> to your .NET installation. So if you run the command, it will download NuGet packages our templates, and there is one template. Uh, that creates an ASP.NET Core website with some PHP uh, already. So .NET new web, but the language is PHP. You can write it like that. <clears throat> and you'll see it creates two projects, a server and a website. Website is a PHP project with the project file we've shown before. And the server is a regular regular Kestrel web server uh, hosting hosting our project. Um, we configure some sessions. Nope. We configure anything uh, needed for running running the project. But there's one additional line which gives you the option to take all the scripts from the compile file and run it as a part of the ASP.NET Core pipeline. <clears throat> so if you build the project for the first time, it downloads all the, all the dependencies, so these warnings will disappear and can put a breakpoint into the into the PHP code, and we can we can check some more advanced interoperability features we can make use uh, with the PHPy project. Like in here, it's all working, so we can start a project as usual. Uh, run it using the .NET Core configuration. Why? Not? I don't want to launch a browser. Let's run the project. And it runs on port 504. Yeah. <clears throat> so ASP.NET Core started, uh, initialized the pipeline, and requested our request handler as part of the of the runtime of the PHPy, and passed the request to the compiled uh, PHP file. And now we can see we can debug the PHP file as we uh, as we shown before. Continue and you see on your on your ASP.NET Core server uh, a message from from PHP code. Let's make it more interesting. Like uh, we can, for example, um, create a class. But uh, we can create a class in a C# -sharp project. Let's uh, imagine we have already already some C# -sharp library or let's call it class library one and create an initial initial project in here 
using .NET new, how is it called, class slip, I guess. <clears throat> so let's have, let's have a C-sharp project with, uh, with a class. And what we can do now, we can reference this C-sharp project from a PHP project. So uh, we can add regular project reference from from the website, which is PHP project, to to the C sharp project. Uh, so it's class library one, come on one slash CS pro. And why would I do that? Uh, it's because uh, I can use this .NET classes in my PHP file. So in this way, uh, imagine you have a huge PHP code uh, consisting of thousands and thousands of files, which is not unusual. And you can slowly replace them. You can slowly replace PHP classes with .NET classes. For example, you, you, are, uh, you are migrating your, your PHP project to .NET and you would like to gain some performance. So you just remove the remove the class from PHP project and rewrite it in C sharp, and the PHP code will look the same. So <clears throat> if we have a constructor, for example, in C sharp, and I create in PHP class library one slash I guess it's called class one class one. We can instantiate the objects as before without any difference, but the class was rewritten in C sharp. So in this way, we can keep the old PHP code and slowly rewrite pieces of it into into C sharp. And if you run the project, let's make it more interesting. Let's make let's make a function, for example. <clears throat> so foo. Yellow from C sharp, nice. And foo. And if you run the project, it will seamlessly integrate with .NET with, the, with my with my .NET with my .NET project. Where is it? Somewhere in here. Oh, it's running. <clears throat> so if you request the page again, the breakpoint hits uh, our creation of the .NET project. Okay, I see. Well, you cannot be now. I didn't recompile the project. <laughs> one more time. Oh, one. There is missing a number. That's why. Let's run it again, and let's put some breakpoints so we see something is happening. Okay. Now we are on PHP, and it seamlessly stepped into into the C sharp. So if we uh, take closer look on the call stack, we are uh, on one stack frame. We are on PHP, and then we are in C sharp, like with no with no overhead at all. And the same the same with uh, calling the function foo. <clears throat> but the integration gives us more more features, like all the types are converted uh, between PHP and C sharp, as you would expect. So. Uh, if we have something like nullable type in in C sharp, e, let's call it i, and we pass null for example in in PHP, it gets it gets automatically converted. But we can uh, go one more step further uh, because uh, thanks to the thanks to the integration and thanks to the interoperability features, we can extend C sharp classes in PHP and also PHP classes in C sharp. So if you write something like my class, which extends this C sharp class, it would all work. Uh, it would also uh, all work and also with function overriding and anything you would expect. 
and also we can write uh, more more integration features and make use of all the uh, .NET features you like, for example, but uh, you don't have in PHP. For example, in PHP, uh, they don't have a delegate. They don't have uh, they don't have an option how to wrap something in <clears throat> in something uh, as a delegate. They don't have type for it. They they have something like closure or or classes that have magic methods like uh, underscore uh, invoke or or underscore call but uh, in c sharp we are used to we are used to write delegates so uh, if i would have something like a function that will return a delegate uh, taking in and returning string what to do for example and it will return this function doing something like converting the number to string in this notation. Uh, and it's fully typed. That's the, that's the reason why would I do that. Uh, PHP doesn't have fully typed anonymous methods, but C Sharp does. And I would prefer to have my code fully typed. So that's why I would write it in C Sharp instead. Um, and uh, now you can you can do the same in <clears throat> in PHP. You can you can take your what to do method and you can just call it with one two three. But now it's it's uh, strongly typed and you cannot have you cannot do a mistake. So let's try it again. <clears throat> yep. Now it's running. So if you refresh the page, we are in here in the calling of foo. It writes something. Now it asks my C sharp method what to do, and I will return an animal strongly typed method to the PHP, and then I will call it from the PHP code. So all this integration, all this uh, interoperability features works uh, like seamlessly. You don't have to do anything. You just write the code as you would expect it. And you can treat the PHP code as you are used to. So uh, uh, I wanted to show you all this because um, we want to show you something bigger, something uh, in real Visual Studio, for example. And we need a few more things. We need uh, to realize there is a bunch of libraries and a bunch of runtime stuff in the PHPy project. So there's a lot of lot of uh, features implemented in the project already. And also, uh, we have to realize that the PHP code behaves like any other any other C# -sharp project. So we can do things, for example, like yeah, we can. Uh, since we have this class in in uh, in the website project, we would like to share it with others. And it is a good it is a good experience. It is a good to do to wrap your uh, your libraries into NuGet packages. So once we have this class in here, we can do things like .NET pack <clears throat> and yeah, it doesn't have a version and it creates, as expected, a NuGet package containing your PHP compiled code without PHP PHP sources. And you can you can take this uh, NuGet package, which you can reveal and explore and open it. Uh, we can take this NuGet package, push it on your NuGet feed, uh, NuGet.org or or something like that, and share it with um, with your team or with others. And all it contains is a DL file. To the compiled PHP code and the specification of the NuGet package, which you can alter in the in the MS build profile uh, as you are used to. <clears throat> and this is a great way of sharing bigger bigger uh, bigger libraries written in PHP or or in another language. Uh, and I, I'm showing you this because uh, now. Uh, Let's make a move to, to Visual Studio and demonstrate 
eraser and PHP. So we can get closer to the to the final demonstration, which will be which will be after that. Um, imagine uh, imagine you have a few more few more files in your PHP project, for example, and <clears throat> you would like to write a new uh, new website in C sharp. Uh, let's say. Let's say you have really old PHP project and all the components, all the parts of your website are, are already written in your in your in your PHP project. And now you are writing this new uh, new uh, SB.NET Core NBC application, and <clears throat> you would like to, of course, uh, make use of the already written code because uh, in this way you can slowly create a new project and reuse existing pieces of code. You don't have to rewrite everything from scratch and wait, for example, a year or two to make the new project working. So in this demonstration, we have three projects. I've prepared a PHP library, a PHP project as, as you see before. And what it does, yes, there is there's a small PHP code. And then uh, there is a C sharp project, regular one with regular uh, Castor web server, with some index uh, razor page. And what we do here, we would like to uh, take this existing PHP code and render it as a component on the razor page. And for this purpose. Uh, we can do it as before. We just create a PHP project. We create an MVC application, but there's an extension to the HTML object, which usually renders things like action link, checkbox, and so on. And there is an extension called PHP. And you can uh, literally take your name of your, of your PHP file, put it as an argument to this PHP extension, and make the runtime to render your PHP, your compiled PHP code at this point. So if you run this project as a, yeah, why not, as a command line, it will again compile, compile all, the, all the PHP stuff, compile all the C-sharp stuff, create the views, and so on. Let's put a breakpoint in here. Let's put a breakpoint in here. And let's put a breakpoint also in here. Yeah, it's already right there. <clears throat> so now you see we are debugging the razor page and it's seamlessly transferred to, to the PHP code. And now we are rendering the PHP code. It's all asynchronous, so that's why you don't see you don't see the razor on the call stack. And and that's like it. That's that's everything you have to do. You can debug it, continue, and in the result, in the result, you see a part of code from Razor and part of code from from PHP. If you take a look on the source code, it's all a single a single HTML code. There is no there are no frames or or JavaScript or anything. It's it's like a one piece one piece of code. So nobody will ever know. Uh, or nobody will ever notice there is some PHP on this on this razor page. Um, and we can do it. the font size, sure, like this. No problem. <clears throat> so we can do this. Uh, we can do this in another way as well. We can render a razor partial view in a PHP code. Which is pretty much the same, but but written in PHP. I guess it's in this file. Yes, it's in this file. Mm. There's the same extension for PHP code already written, and as you can see, uh, we can write something like HTML and partial and and type name of your partial view, which I have in here. Um. <clears throat> We can also pass a model, 
Uh, it can be a C sharp object or it can be a PHP object as well. So in this in this demonstration, uh, we have class user as a PHP class. We pass it as a uh, as a model for for this partial razor view, and the partial razor view uh, is stating it's accepting this user. So for uh, in the view of of the C sharp project, it's a regular .NET class. If we uh, navigate to the definition. It generates something from metadata, but it's actually contained in the generated in the generated PHP library. So it doesn't care actually. Uh, I, I did implement the model in in a PHP in a PHP object. So let's start let's start this project and see what happens. <clears throat> yep. So running uh, it has the breakpoint in PHP code. And if you put a breakpoint in here, you can see it transfers the, the execution to the to the razor partial view. And on the call stack, you can see now we are in PHP. It does a bunch of stuff, and then it continues in the razor view. It renders the razor thing and goes back to the PHP code. And in the result, there is. There is your there is your razor partial view rendered in a PHP page that was compiled into .NET. So that's how you can that's how you can reuse existing stuff from from MVC application or from old PHP application in in other projects that are on a different platform, for example. And uh, I was showing this for uh, for another purpose because. Uh, um, What's great about the project? It, it handles a larger projects uh, than than two or three PHP files, and we showed it before. But now we can all make it working like together with Razor and and all the other stuff, and uh, that's that's a bigger bigger web application. And we've chosen a WordPress for this for this demonstration. So in this demonstration, uh, we take the entire sources of WordPress. Just pack it into into an MS built project file, and we create a NuGet package from from the entire WordPress, and we use this NuGet package in the MVC application in in the ASP.NET Core application, without configuring any web server or without installing any PHP or or anything like this. <clears throat> so let's maybe let's go back to to Visual Studio Code. And and I have something like yes, it's SDK. Don't say. <clears throat> and in here we have a bunch of projects. One of them is WordPress folder, and it contains it contains the entire sources of the WordPress applications or the WordPress application. And you don't have to actually take a look on the sources. The, the important thing is the project file. So we stated a uh, target framework for the WordPress application is .NET Standard 2.0. We've prepared some some property in here. Uh, like in, the, in other C Sharp projects, we have no warn properties, so we can ignore some warnings because actually PHP applications are full of, full of issues, full of warnings, full of errors, and some of them are just not that important that I would like to care about. So, for example, this one is about putting mandatory parameters after optional parameters, which is okay in PHP. In, in .NET, you cannot do that. So, uh, the compiler shows you the warning, but uh, for this demonstration, we are ignoring it. Uh, also, we are compiling all the PHP files, all the PHP files, except for some, except for some of them. And uh, we are including some content files like pictures and JavaScript files and CSS files into the NuGet package. This is very important because if you create a NuGet package with the content files, uh, then you don't have to do anything. You have a NuGet package with WordPress and all its content right where you need it. And that's it. That's it. That's the rest is the same like before, with the one exception. Uh, we have a SDK project which adds few more features to the to the WordPress, and the SDK project is here. And 
it, it defines some interfaces that are not needed, but it also makes it extensible for our helper project that uh, provides an extension method called use WordPress. So if you write this use WordPress uh, method, if you, if you call this use WordPress method in your in your ASP.NET Core application, it does a bunch of stuff like loading the WordPress into the ASP.NET Core pipeline, and also it enables, uh, for example, ASP.NET Core response caching, which is pretty cool because uh, everyone who ever configured the WordPress site knows uh, you have to enable some caching caching plugins like WP Super Cache or anything like this. Uh, which is not needed now because we have .NET Core and we have this response caching middleware. <clears throat> so there's also a small application to test the WordPress and to run it on Kestrel. So as you can see, it's a regular Kestrel site calling the use WordPress. So let's let's run this let's run this little sample. Uh, if you press something like a five, I guess. Yep. <clears throat> it compiles it compiles the entire WordPress, which takes a few seconds. And <clears throat> uh, and outputs a bunch of warnings, like a thousands of them. A lot of them are because of the unreachable code detected. Uh, because in PHP, can I open it? Yes, I can open it. Because in PHP, they, they like to uh, make conditions like if function exists, do this, and if class exists, do that. And the compiler knows the function exists. So it makes a lot of code, a lot of code unreachable and it outputs you a warning for this. Anyways, now we are configuring a pipeline and stepping into the WordPress. And we are doing a bunch of stuff like we are reading WordPress configuration from from uh, app settings.json file. Because in WordPress, to configure our database or other things, you have to modify uh, a source PHP file. And we don't like that. So we've replaced it with app settings.json. So it, we load the configuration from app settings.json. And then we configure the WordPress using the settings file instead of, of modifying the sources source PHP file. We also enable the response caching middleware and uh, the SDK also um, enables the short URL rewriting. So uh, in WordPress you have these short URLs which doesn't refer to uh, to actual to actual to actual PHP files but instead they have to be parsed and passed to index.php. So uh, in, in here we configure the short URL rule using the ASP.NET Core middleware. Um, we pass the middleware to, uh, to the PHPy runtime, which will handle, handle requests and pass them to compiled, compiled source files. And also, uh, also middleware for static files. So all the all the JavaScript, CSS files, and images will be handled as well. So let's continue. Um, I've already uh, started MySQL database, which is which is the most advanced topic of, of running WordPress on .NET actually. So I already have MySQL database, and yeah, it's it's running. So we can. I guess I've configured it on port 5404. So if we open the open the browser, not the ads, in here, <clears throat> it does some jittering, and, and here it is. Yes, that was not that slow. And in here we have the entire application running on on .NET. So you see a bunch of debugging stuff. You can, of course, put breakpoints in the PHP code somewhere, somewhere interesting, like settings. Okay, somewhere in here. So you can put breakpoints in a PHP code and and do whatever you are used to from 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 the debugging application. 
Yes. <laughs> but uh, this is something we have shown like a year ago. And what's nice about this approach uh, is compiling the WordPress or compiling the PHP application uh, with this property called called generate generate package on build. Yes, it means it creates me a NuGet package from from this project file. And in here uh, we have one created from the from the WordPress. It's about eight megabytes, eight megabytes uh, large. Uh, it contains the entire WordPress with the content files. So whenever I reference this NuGet package from my C# -sharp application, I get all the content files uh, as well. And in lib folder, there's this compiled WordPress, including the XML documentation file, which is generated from the PHP documentation documentation comments from the WordPress itself. So we call this package pitchpy.wordpress, and we can use this package to run our new uh, WordPress site without having any any WordPress or without having any uh, any PHP files in my project actually. So for these purposes, I've prepared a really small a small application on Kestrel, and that's this one. Yep. So there's this, there's the application uh, with. Uh, with no PHP files at all. They're just one reference to that PHPy to WordPress uh, NuGet package. And the rest is uh, handled by .NET build system uh, itself. So mm, we call this use WordPress to install the WordPress into, into, the, uh, into the request handler pipeline. And with few plugins that I will show later, but the important thing is uh, there is no PHP code at all. We reference the PHP code from the NuGet package and we can put breakpoint as usual and run, uh, run the application. Yep. Um, so in here uh, we cannot step into because it's compiled in the NuGet package. But you run it as, as usual, and we will see the same same as before because we are running the same NuGet package as we've created before. <coughs> but I, uh, why would I do that? Why would I compile the WordPress to the .NET? Um, there are a few reasons. Like as I shown before, uh, we can install this response caching mechanism. Uh, that like boosts performance of the WordPress site. So if we are if we log out and go back to the site, uh, the response time to uh, to make the request to the site is about two milliseconds because it just it just hits the it just hits the sp.net core response caching middleware and gets me the output immediately. What I can do as well is extend the WordPress with with C sharp. So if I have some components, some uh, some packages in C sharp or as a NuGet package, and I don't have them in PHP. I can I can extend WordPress in C sharp using these components. For example, in here, um, there's an additional widget in my dashboard that is actually written in in C sharp as a razor partial view. So we can use the same mechanism as I shown in the demonstration before to render Razor into widgets of the WordPress. And again, the WordPress source code was not modified at all. So uh, the PHP code doesn't know it's, it's coming from, from .NET. It's using the same syntaxes and same everything as it's used to, but it can be extended with a C sharp in this way using the, using the compiler. <clears throat> Another like, cool feature is I can write various plugins and short codes and have these app settings uh, different for development and for production, which is something, uh, again, which is not in the WordPress as it is in PHP. And if you take, if you take a closer look on, 
on the on the output of the project file, if we compile the project, there is no source files of the original WordPress. So uh, that handles a lot of a uh, lot of attacks to WordPress sites by modifying the source code, which is now like not possible. Uh, you can of course disable um, disable uh, modifications of the PHP files on your web server, but in here. Uh, it's coming as a single compiled WordPress site, which you can also test automatically on your DevOps, Azure DevOps, it's called now Azure DevOps, I guess, uh, on your DevOps uh, platform to check the integrity of all the plugins and everything and deploy just the compiled, uh, fully working, tested application to your, to your website. And also, as I was talking about uh, the other two links, you can take use of uh, the diagnostic window of Visual Studio, which I really like because it reveals me uh, a lot of memory issues, a lot of, lot of exceptions, a lot of CPU leaks and all the other issues I can have. So in here, when I'm uh, browsing through the site and without the response caching because the response caching is disabled when I'm logged in. You can see the CPU is merely doing something. It's just a little little peak and and nothing else. And also uh, I can profile profile the application and see all the all the stuff I'm used to because it's very good practice to profile your application before you go to production, as, or, of course. And yes, that's it. I made it in 45 minutes. So uh, that's actually everything I wanted to I wanted to demonstrate in this presentation. But I have, yes, I guess I have a few more seconds. I can show you one more use of, of the .NET. Uh, I've prepared a little, little project in in, uh, in Visual Studio, written in PHP code. And as you can see, it, it uses a Xamarin, uh, Xamarin framework. So let me connect my phone somewhere into, into, into here. And where is it? And in the last few seconds, uh, let me show you how the .NET is powerful for for uh, various reasons. Uh, you saw you saw uh, we can write we can integrate PHP and .NET and all the stuff. But .NET provides you much more. .NET provides you better performance. You can publish your you can publish your project to various devices to Linux, macOS, Windows, and everything. You can of course uh, make your application ultra portable. And uh, once you connect your phone to Visual Studio, you see it appears in the top menu. And we can just run any .NET project using the Xamarin framework on your mobile device. And I have an Android device in here. And uh, as you know, .NET doesn't see a difference between languages. Uh, once, once the language is compiled to .NET, you can do whatever you want with it. So what PeachPy allows you to do is like write an application for your mobile phone as well. <clears throat> so let it compile. Uh, deploying, building, installing targets, uh, doing some strong signatures, and deploying the DLL files to the phone. Starting debugging, yes. Oh, and it's running. So in here we have, in here we have a little planet uh, written in PHP, running on Android device, which gives uh, one more use case for for the PHP language. Mm, I guess it would it would work for for Apple and uh, Windows Phone as well, but. I'm okay with Android. So that's it. Uh, I think I made it in 47 minutes. It's great. Thanks. So if you have any questions, um, 
I'm here and I'll be glad to to answer. If someone's listening at 2 a.m., of course. Hey, Jacob, that's awesome stuff. We do have a couple questions in the chat room. Sure. Um, so we have some folks that were asking, is, um, does everybody get that performance bump when, at, when they drop in and they start using Razor Pages with PHP? Well, as you know, Razor Pages are compiled to, uh, to .NET, so Razor Pages are strongly typed and they can be written, uh, they can be written uh, much more performant than PHP. And there is no performance drop because because uh, it's it's actually doing like nothing. It's just calling the Razor uh, Razor partial view PHP code. There is there is nothing uh, nothing performant it does. So there is no performance drop. No so performance drop. so you get great performance when you're using Razor with PHP. Um, and there's also some questions here when for folks that are just visiting a WordPress app, not an admin user, but if folks are just browsing to WordPress, do they also see that great performance coming through? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, that's that's mostly because that's mostly because of the ASP doesn't call response caching middleware uh, because locally we uh, we have. Uh, response in two milliseconds, which is which is great. So uh, users will definitely notice the difference. But uh, of course, if you configure another caching mechanism on your Apache web server or anywhere else, it's the result will be pretty much the same. But in here, it's shorter, cleaner, and and much more configurable than. Uh, than usual approaches. Cool. And yeah. um, one last question. Our friend Ancient Coder here in the chat room <clears throat> is asking, WordPress has had major security t attacks. How does your implementation of Peach Pie with WordPress affect that security story? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, as you see, the WordPress is entirely compiled, so you don't have any source files on your web server. So any attacks on the sources are like not possible at all. Also, there is this ASP doesn't core uh, and uh, ASP doesn't core pipeline and your Azure Web Server, which catches a lot of attacks. And uh, we've actually uh, we've actually uh, saw a lot of attacks on on bugs in PHP. And since you don't have any PHP on your web server, these attacks are also possible. So uh, there are a lot of improvements and uh, issues that are now in PHP, like reruns or, or similar, are, are uh, simply not possible because you don't until rather uh, crash than, than allows you to modify an unsafe memory. So a lot of attacks that are uh, that targeting PHP are simply not possible with with the compound. That's it. Cool. And and um, last question that, that I got that I have here, I want to make sure I touch on. For folks that are browsing to a pe to a Peach Pie enabled website, the, is there an initial download that those folks see? This all a Peach Pie runs completely on the server, right? Yes. Peach Pie is like a compiler and runtime on the server, so they don't notice. Uh, the only way how they can notice is to is to reveal the response headers of the web server, and they would notice there is x powered by uh, header with value of peach by. So that's the only way how they can notice. But there is no downloading. There is no initial 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 download at all, and so no, they won't notice. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Jacob. I, we've a number of the folks here in the chat room are pointing out that that I've been doing a little bit of work with Peach Pie on my channel. I know you've seen some of the stuff that I'm doing over there. So, really great stuff. I can't wait to go a little bit further exploring Peach Pie on my own. And it sounds like a couple of the folks here in the chat room are excited to give it a try with PHP on their own. So, thank you so much.
Yeah, just think about putting all the that goodness of great. Nugget together with all the goodness of the, the PHP components. Oh my gosh, awesome. yes. It's crazy. So thanks so much. We're, uh, we'll catch you later, and we're going to start getting ready for our next presentation. But in the meantime, we've got, we've got some quick words on Vue and Webpack. Catch you later, Jacob. Thanks. Bye.